Welcome to Home Biz Tax Talk. My name is Lysandra Everett. I am the Home Biz Tax Lady where I help home business owners win the tax game. Home Biz Tax Talk airs Monday through Friday, 9 o'clock-ish. And when you tune in my show, you're going to hear about topics that are important to the home business community. And so today I want to talk about ways for you to reduce identity theft during this tax season. Um, tax season is one of the biggest times that identity theft occurs. It happens all the time. But during tax season, it's really been a big time. And it, um, you know, although it has decreased over the years, it's uh, the last three years, it has really decreased because at, I think at two, 2015, there were over 700,000 instances of identity theft during tax season, which means that there are people who filed fraudulent returns and got refunds. And then when the, the actual taxpayer went to go file their taxes, like, holy cow, somebody's already filed, um, you know, a tax return under their social security number. And, you know, so now you have to go and prove you are who you say you are. And see, that's the thing about e-filing, right? Under, when you e-file, every social security number gets one e-file. OK, so if someone goes and files a fraudulent return under your Social Security number, you go to file your return, then it gets kicked back and you have to go through the whole paper process. And again, proving you are who you say you are to prove that the other person is fraudulent It's a hot, ridiculous mess. So I want to talk about, you know, five things that you can do. And to really safeguard and, you know, also protect yourself against identity theft during this tax season. And also, I want to state, too, that it's not just taxpayers that are being defrauded. It's also tax professionals, okay, where, um, you know, there are instances of tax professionals getting hacked people getting access to that information, but also um, stealing your preparer tax ID number and filing returns under your tax ID, your uh, preparer tax ID number, your P10. So you have to be very vigilant at looking at the number of returns that were, are prepared under your tax ID, your preparer um, tax ID number, because if you've got more uh, returns showing up than what you actually filed, then somebody is filing under your P10 and you need to get that fixed, okay? So, but for my taxpayers though, number one is to file early. The earlier you file, the less of the chance that you allow for um, hackers and scammers to get a hold of your information, okay? So no, you don't, you really don't wanna wait until April 15th to file your taxes. You know, you can be filing your taxes in February um, or March. And, you know, in, in the tax community, we have two peak seasons. We have the people who are there on it and are getting their refunds. And then we have the people that drag their feet because they owe and don't want to file until the last minute. You need to stop that. You need to go ahead and file early because even if you owe, you don't have to send the check by then. You have until April 15th to send the check. So the sooner that you know that you owe and how much you owe, the better off for you and the more time that you have to prepare and work these things out before the tax deadline. Okay. So number one is file early. Number two, don't click on suspicious links in your emails. There are a lot of phishing schemes out there, fish with a PH phishing. And so what happens is that you get an, an, uh, an official looking email, like from the IRS, knowing that the IRS does not initiate contact via an email, okay? They send letters, okay? So that's the first thing. But you also see them with like PayPal, right? I get, you know, PayPal here, click on this link. We need you to verify your identity. Do not click on any type of suspicious links. If you get an email or even a letter from the IRS, because scammers are getting very good at what they're doing. They're sending you official letters from the IRS. You need to contact your enrolled agent your CPA, someone to help you navigate that so that you don't fall victim to this stuff. And and we also know you get the phone calls where, you know, people are calling saying, hey, the cops are going to come get you if you don't pay us this, um, you know, you owe this tax debt or whatever. That stuff is absolutely false. The IRS does not do that. Now, what further complicates things, though, is that, you know, now that the IRS is dealing with private collection companies in order to collect a debt, 
then um, you still need to be very vigilant in how you deal with that, knowing that you pay the IRS. You don't pay those collection companies, okay? So you have, you have number one, have to know your tax situation. If you know you don't, you don't owe the IRS and all that stuff, then you know this is some mess, right? But you have to know your tax situation to do that. So number two is don't click on any suspicious links. You know, you can verify that stuff. All right. Number three, beware of your social media posting. Okay. So one of the things that you see on, on social media, it's fun, but when you think about the information that you're putting out there, you, you have to have a level of awareness. So you see those cute little posts like, okay, let's um, talk about relationships, like when you met, what city did you get married in, and all of that stuff. You know, you get, you know, what was your first car, and all those types of, you know, fun questions to answer. But those are security questions. If you look on, you know, your different sites, you know, when you set your password, it also asks you if you want to set certain security questions. Those, those questions that you're answering on social media can be, uh, can be security questions on your other sites, right? So, um, I like, I, and I see them all the time. And so I don't answer those things because that's just more information that you're putting out there for people to get their hands on. Even though the person that, that made that post might not be doing anything malicious, the truth is, that with the number of um, Facebook profiles and other types of social media profiles that are being jacked and, you know, people are parading around as someone else, if you are not careful, you are going to give those security question type information that you give that to the wrong people, right? So you got to be careful of those types of, you know, little fun questions and think, is this a security question on any of my secure sites, whether it's, you know, it's banking, shopping, whatever, if you've answered those questions over there, don't be answering that stuff on Facebook and Twitter and all that stuff because you're just putting more information out there about you that nobody's really got to work hard to figure out, all right? Number four is creating longer passwords. Now, y'all, this one I had to really, you know, I really had to have a conversation with myself, okay? Because, see, it used to be, you know, it's eight to ten characters, uppercase, lowercase, you know, spe you know special character, number, all that. No, now what, um, what the, um, the, the data, the IT folks are saying now is that you need longer passwords, like to the tune of 25 characters. And like me, I'm like, listen, I had issues remembering the eight to 10 character passwords. Now you want me to remember 25 and I can't write it down and all this other stuff. And so this is where, um, you know, password storing sites become really valuable to you and that they can generate random passwords for you and you just need to th think of that one really long password to protect that site okay so um so yeah getting those really long pass rant completely random passwords and you know you're not going to write that stuff down and you know you're not going to remember it so you let those sites generate the passwords but you you know have that one really long password to protect that particular site that you don't use anywhere else, okay? So the longer passwords are also key. And then, yeah, number five is to stop sharing your secure documents on social media. Now, this is the one that just really just drives me absolutely bananas. Listen, if you're dealing with, you know, like I, I you know, a lot of my business, 95% of my business comes from social media. But there is no document sharing on social media. Don't be sending your W-2s, um, your driver's license information. Do not put that on social media. You should have your tax professional should have a document sharing site or a portal for you to upload that information securely. We get too, way too comfortable with uh, with Facebook and Google Drive and Dropbox and all of that stuff and and really depending on their security okay not all of that stuff is secure like I use Dropbox a lot you know for you know for uh, for other things and Google Drive for other things but you know but uploading you know secure documents that have you know names birth dates social security numbers and all that stuff absolute no go at this station. You need to stop putting that stuff on Facebook um, and Messenger and all of that because that is 
once it's there, it's there. You can't go back and delete it, right? So like if you even go in Messenger and send somebody a message and then you're like, hold on, I don't want to send that, you might delete it on your end, but it's still on their end. So you need to not be putting that stuff on social media. Facebook ain't secure, okay? Just not. So don't do that. If you have, if you know, especially if you're dealing with a tax professional, just saying, oh, just upload your documents on Facebook, Absolutely not run in the other direction um, because, you know, because really you're opening the door, right? For somebody to just come on in and jack your information. So, um, so those are some, these are like some basic things that you can do to help reduce identity theft. And like most people really aren't thinking identity theft or thinking, you know, oh, if you're going to get got, you're going to get got. But when you have to go through the drama and the trauma of having to, to identify yourself to prove that you are who you say you are and not somebody else, it totally puts, you know, it wrecks your whole life. You know, it wrecks your whole tax life. And, you know, and the unfortunate thing with the IRS is that you don't get to get an identity theft pin until after the identity theft has happened, which I think is absolutely backwards. But you know what? It is. That's the way it is. So make sure you're taking the steps to protect your information, you guys, because you know what? It's just it's just too easy. Right. It's just too easy when you think about, you know, you've got your name, you've got your birth date. And I mean, even though and even though you might not have your year of your birthday on Facebook, how many people announce how old they are? Oh, I'm 34 today. So it don't take a genius to do math to see, find out when your birth date is. And so if they just, you know, if people just take enough time to put this information together. Yeah, they can steal your identity. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. So you want to make it as difficult as possible. Okay. So I hope that helps you out. Gives you some food for thought. We're going into tax season and this just ain't the time to play. That's all. <laughs> all right. So thank you guys so much for tuning into Home Biz Tax Talk. Again, we air Monday through Friday, nine o'clock ish. And you can come here to get your questions answered about your home business taxes. All right. Have a great day. I'll see you next time. Bye.